Matthew chapter 24, Jesus speaks of the destruction of the temple. Jesus left and was going away from the temple when his disciples came to him to show him the temple buildings. Yes, he said, you may well look at all these. I tell you this, not a single stone here will be left in its place. Every one of them will be thrown down. Troubles and Persecutions as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him in private. Tell us when all this will be, they asked, and what will happen to show that it is the time for your coming and the end of the age. Jesus answered, Watch out and do not let anyone fool you, because many men will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and fool many people. You are going to hear the noise of battles close by, and the news of battles far away. But listen, do not be troubled. Such things must happen, but they do not mean that the end has come. Countries will fight each other. Kingdoms will attack one another. There will be famines and earthquakes everywhere. All these things are like the first pains of childbirth. Then you will be arrested and handed over and punished and put to death. All mankind will hate you because of me. Many will give up their faith at that time. They will betray each other and hate each other. Then many false prophets will appear and fool many people. Such will be the spread of evil that many people love will grow cold. But whoever holds out to the end will be saved. And this good news about the kingdom will be preached through all the world for a witness to all mankind. And then will the end come. The Awful Horror You will see the awful horror of which the prophet Daniel spoke, standing in the holy place. Then those who are in Judea must run away to the hills. The man who is on the roof of his house must not take the time to go down and gather his belongings from the house. The man who is in the field must not go back to get his cloak. How terrible it will be in those days for women who are pregnant and for mothers who have little babies. Pray to God that you will not have to run away during the winter or on a Sabbath. For the trouble at that time will be far more terrible than any there has ever been from the beginning of the world to this very day. Nor will there ever be anything like it. But God has already reduced the number of days. Had he not done so, nobody would survive. For the sake of his chosen people, however, God will reduce the days. Then, if anyone says to you, Look, here is a Messiah, or there he is, do not believe him, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear. They will perform great signs and wonders for the purpose of deceiving God's chosen people, if possible. Listen, I have told you this ahead of time. Or if people should tell you, Look, he is out in the desert, don't go there. Or if they say, Look, he is hiding here, don't believe it. For the Son of Man will come, like the lightning which flashes across the whole sky from the east to the west. <clears throat> Wherever there is a dead body, the vultures will gather. <clears throat> The coming of the Son of Man. Soon after the trouble of those days, the sun will grow dark, the moon will no longer shine, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers in space will be driven from their courses. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Then all the tribes on earth will weep, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The great trumpet will sound, and he will send out his angels to the four corners of the earth, and they will gather his chosen people from one end of the world to the other. <clears throat> the lesson of the fig tree. Let the fig tree teach you a lesson. When its branch has become green, and tender, and it starts putting out leaves. You know that the summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, 
you will know that the time is near, ready to begin. Remember this, all these things will happen before the people now living have all died. Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. No one knows the day or hour. No one knows, however, when that day and hour will come. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son. The Father alone knows. The coming of the Son of Man will be like what happened in the time of Noah. Just as in the days before the flood, people ate and drank, men and women married, up to the very day Noah went into the ark. Yet they did not know what was happening until the flood came and swept them all away. This is how it will be when the Son of Man comes. At that time, two men will be working in the field. One will be taken away. The other will be left behind. Two women will be at the mill grinding meal. One will be taken away, and the other will be left behind. Watch out then, because you do not know what day your Lord will come. Remember this. If the man of the house knew the time and when the thief would come, he would stay awake and not let the thief break into his house. For this reason, then, you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you are not expecting him. The faithful or the unfaithful servant? Who then is the faithful and wise servant? He is the one whom his master has placed in charge of the other servants to give them their food at the proper time. How happy is that servant if his master finds him doing this when he comes home. Indeed, I tell you, the master will put that servant in charge of all of his property. But if he has a bad servant, he will tell himself, My master will not come back for a long time, and he will begin to beat his servants and eat and drink with drunkards. Then the servant's master will come back some day when he does not expect him, and at a time he does not know. The master will cut him to pieces and make him share the fate of the hypocrites. There he will cry and gnash his teeth. The Parable of the Ten Girls On that day the kingdom of heaven will be like ten girls who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any extra oil with them, while the wise ones took containers full of oil with their lamps. The bridegroom was late in coming, so the girls began to nod and fall asleep. It was already midnight when the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom. Come and meet him. The ten girls woke up and trimmed their lamps. Then the foolish ones said to the wise ones, Let us have some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. No, indeed, the wise ones answered back, there is not enough for you and us. Go to the store and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish girls went out to buy some oil, and while they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five girls who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was closed. Later the other girls arrived. Sir, sir, let us in, they cried. But I really don't know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, Watch out then, because you do not know the day or the hour. The Parable of the Three Servants It will be like a man who was about to leave home on a trip. He called his servants and put them in charge of his property. He gave to each one according to his ability. To one he gave five thousand, to the other two thousand, and to the other one thousand. Then he left on his trip. The servant who had received five thousand dollars went at once and invested his money and earned about $5,000. In the same way, the servant who received $2,000 earned another $2,000. But the servant who received 1000 went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The servant who had received $5,000 came in and handed over the other five thousand dollars. 
You gave me five thousand dollars? Sir, he said, look, here are another five thousand dollars that I have earned. Well done, good and faithful servant, said the master. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had been given two thousand dollars came in and said, You gave me two thousand dollars. Sir, look, here are another two thousand dollars that I have earned. Well done, good and faithful servant, said the master. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant, who had received one thousand dollars, came in and said, Sir, I know you are a hard man. You reap harvests where you did not plant, and gather crops where you did not scatter seed. I was afraid, so I went off and hid your money in the ground. Look, here is what belongs to you. You bad and lazy servant, the master said. You knew, did you, that I reap harvest where I did not plant, and gather crops where I did not scatter seed. Well, then you should have deposited my money in the bank, and I would have received it all back with interest when I returned. Now take the money away from him and give it to the one who has ten thousand dollars. For to everyone who has even more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But to the one who has nothing, even the little he has, will be taken away from him. As for this useless servant, throw him outside in the dark. There he will cry and gnash his teeth. The Final Judgment When the Son of Man comes as King, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his royal throne, and all the earth's people will be gathered before him. Then he will divide them into two groups. Just as the shepherds separate the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to the people on his right, You that are blessed by my father, come. Come and receive the kingdom which has been prepared for you since the creation of the world. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you received me in your home, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me, in prison, and you visited me. The righteous will then answer him, When, Lord, did you ever, did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and welcome you into our home, or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick? or in prison and visit you. The king will answer, I tell you indeed, whenever you did this for one of the least important of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on the left, Away from me, you that are under God's curse. Away to the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, but you did not feed me. Thirsty, but you did not give me drink. I was a stranger, but you would not welcome me in. Naked, and you would not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, but you would not take care of me. Then they will answer him, When, Lord, did we ever see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and we would not help you? The king will answer them back, I tell you indeed, Whenever you refuse to help one of these least important ones, you refuse to help me. These, then, will be sent off to eternal punishment, and the righteous will go to eternal life.